Yes, I am aware. You should know this cannot be rushed. You're the one that continues to... Ah, back so soon, are we? Even I didn't expect to see you back so quickly. Just feeling more compelled, hmm? I see. Well, let's get to it, shall we? No need in wasting time. Please, after you. Quiet your thoughts. You will listen only to my words. Bring us a new tale, my friend. Allow us to absorb your words. Oh my. How grim. Surely to be in such a predicament is undoubtedly petrifying. Let not it scare you to death, my dear. <laughs> a horrible tale called A Very Lonely Girl by Corva C. Dr. Thompson, are you in here? What's this? Something's come up. I need you to spot me this one tonight. Thank. <laughs> I can't believe this. Any coincidence that it had to be on a Friday night? Oh, great. She left one on the table just for me. this anyway. Hmm. Oh, this could be interesting. You're that guy who dropped dead in public. Haven't had... Oh my goodness. You poor thing. Hmm. It's terrible seeing a boy as young and handsome as you in a place like this. Usually we just get the elderly here. Hmm. Let's figure out what did this to you, shall we? Hmm. Hmm. Now let's start over here. The nails on the right hand appear clean and intact. No sign of struggle. Inner and outer arm have nothing out of the ordinary. Same can be said for this side of the chest. The neck appears intact as well. Chest and back are all devoid of any markings or puncture wounds. Hmm. Hmm. This one is very unusual. My initial thought was murder, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Perhaps foul play? I wonder what Dr. Thompson would think about all of this. It's a shame she won't see my report till tomorrow. Hmm. The left arm is much of the same. The nails on the left hand are clean, no sign of a struggle, and there is no sign of a wedding ring ever being on this ring finger. Hmm. Mm. Uh, 
Um, the legs look fine, too. Now let me see that face again. And the face is perfectly intact. I dare say more than perfect. <laughs> it's a damn shame, really. I think you're the youngest we've ever had in our cold chambers. If you were still alive, you'd probably take pity on these people. Let me think. On the farthest left is Mary Shelby, age 77. We believe she must have died due to heart failure. Mainly because of how overweight she was. A real cow. She also has a great deal of fluid build up in her right leg. A common feature in those who died of heart failure. Next cube over is Earl Brown, age 50. Nothing special about him. Just some homeless guy. The authorities think he must have got drunk and fell off a bridge. But they brought him here just to be sure. Beside him is Herbert Oscar, age 70. No, I take it back. I think he's actually 80 years old. <laughs> anyway, he's a real sad case. He was found three weeks after his passing on his ranch house by one of his kids. Dr. Thompson, <laughs> my superior, seems to think that this guy killed himself. Most likely with cyanide or something like that. We haven't got our lab results back yet. Ugh, and don't get me started with Dr. Thompson. Ever since one of our interns quit and the other being hospitalized, we've been working at half our efficiency. When I eventually get her job, I can guarantee this morgue will be running better than ever before. We're both about being courteous for our subjects here. But I think it actually hinders her more than me. She's just too slow. Besides that, she left me here to do two people's work. I can only imagine who she might be doing. That loose woman. Where's the cart? Oh, there it is. Are you kidding me? Are we out of scalpels again? Oh, wait, here they are. <sighs> I must admit, handsome. I'm feeling like I'm defiling a work of art here. At least you died in company, unlike Oscar and Shelby over there. From what I can tell by working here, death is very lonely, slow, and painful. Anyways, let's get started. I'm going to be here all night otherwise. Oh, God. Despite what I said, I still wish Thompson was here to help out. One's got to have a steady hand to get inside the rib cage. At least the hard part's done. Now, where are my bone shears? Ah, here they are. <clears throat> it always surprises me <laughs> how people can be so scared of something like a knife being lodged into them. When I started out, <clears throat> these bone shears scared me more than a knife ever could. I used to think that when the EMTs come <clears throat> and the person whose knife is in them they just rush them to the ER. <laughs> but what would they do if they came for someone who was just lying there in pieces? Ugh. <clears throat> Puncture wounds are something you can recover from. But cut up ribs like these <laughs> will be like an eternity. But still, <clears throat> I went on with my training. I love what I do. I think one of my peers' kids said it best. She says, I prep people to go to heaven. <laughs> I guess that's somewhat true anyways. 
I don't like kids, though. <laughs> I absolutely hate the idea of <laughs> having kids. I feel as though they would just get in the way of me and the husband that I'll eventually find. It shouldn't be too hard. I'm in my 30s. <sighs> but I still have my naturally ah, feminine beauty. Eventually, <laughs> all the boys will realize what hussies all those other girls are. Then, boys like you will come running right to me, just begging for my attention. I'm sorry. I didn't mean you were like all other boys. I'm sure that you were such a gentleman before you died. To a point that I'm sure a lot of hussies manipulated you. But I wouldn't. I'm a nice girl. And I think I treat you better than any of them. And... <sighs> there. <sighs> hmm. Well, this is all very strange. No defects, no sign of organ failure. This man is dead, but his innards tell me he should still be alive. Hmm. I should probably skip ahead and start removing the brain. This might be my first case of Negliria Fowleri. I suppose I should enjoy you before it's over. It's funny. Your death tastes different from the others. Must be because of your age. Oh! How could I forget? I need to take a picture of you for Lizzie. You will definitely top that cutie she is down at the funeral home. Ugh. This lighting sucks. Where's the flashlight on this thing? Mm, there we go. I wonder what kind of filter I should use. Maybe... <laughs> what? The, the pupils are dilating. Oh my god. I, I can't believe it. You're still alive. How? The zoo. <laughs> Why didn't I bother to look down here? The right foot has two small puncture holes right at the heel, consistent with a snake bite. Oh my god. Your chart said you dropped dead at the local zoo. Oh my god, what did I do? <laughs> Dr. Thompson is going to be furious with me. And when word about this gets out, people are going to mock me. I'll lose my dream job, and now you know about Lizzie. <laughs> You're making things very, very difficult for me. I should have known better about trusting a boy like you. You all are just a bunch of users and abusers. You probably wanted it all to be like this, didn't you? This is some sort of sick plot against me, isn't it? I kissed you and everything. <laughs> I'm just going to have to do my job. I have to get that heart out. Oh, God. The heart's severed. I feel... Oh, I feel really sick. So sad. To feel so desolate that one must resort to such odious things. I'm so sorry to rush you along, my dear, but I have many things that need tending to today, so I must insist you take your leave now. I'm sure you'll be back very soon. Good night, my dear. <laughs>